want to start with uh, where do you stand on nylon string versus acoustic? With what you were just playing as one example, but also considering you know beginner guitarists as well. So where do you stand as a principle? Oh, I mean personally, I kind of predominantly play nylon. So, but you know, steel string has its own. They have very different kind of sounds, I guess. So it depends on what you want to kind of play. A lot of people obviously kind of associate nylons with classical guitars, or this one's actually a flamenco guitar. But um, sort of the Spanish guitar, if you like, and this is kind of maybe more towards like Americana or like folk music. I mean, but um, personally, for like my right hand, for my nails, I prefer to play nylon string. But for you know, it depends on certain styles. If I was playing like big, more open chords, or if I had to bar, like if I'm doing bars. You know, because we've got a lot. The the width here is much wider. Yeah. Typically. So if you're trying to do, like, if you're doing a lot of bar chord stuff, you know, I grew up playing electric guitar, so it's like, kind of comes from that school of playing bar chords. So when I play nylon, it's not like I'm coming from a classical background, because, like, classical guitarists don't play bar chords much. Yeah, okay. Flamenco style. Yeah. Um, you can, of course, do a little bit of that on a steel string, but this is where it shines. Yeah. And you did a little bit of that in the course that you've uh, done for the website. Yeah, it's yeah. double arpeggio stuff, didn't I? Yeah. So um, is there something that you can demonstrate for this now? And uh, just giving giving it a bit of context is what I want to do, these sort of extra video clips. Yeah, for. sure. Fl well, for flamenco in general, I mean, the main, the big thing for flamenco, which sort of people just assume it's all about the, like all the rasgueos, or like doing the, uh, or like, you know. But actually, a lot of it comes from the thumb. So a lot of the guys, if you're going to learn flamenco, they'll just get you playing everything with the thumb. The biggest difference is that, so when you're playing, I'm not a classical player at all, but, you know, your, your thumb is always, um, make sure I get the words right, a, is it tarando? Tarando's free, yeah. So thumb is always tarando on classical, meaning that it's not a rest stroke typically so it's like the thumb doesn't rest on the next string when you pluck it whereas flamenco the thumb is always apoyando which means a rest stroke so everything on the thumb and you're not over the sound hole there no yeah really far back as well so typically with flamenco you're you know you're playing much closer to the bridge you want that brightness that attack and it's all rest strokes so if you look at my wrist it's quite cocked out and it's all kind of coming from from this kind of movement here much like I mean it's a gypsy form of music you know that's where it kind of comes from and if you look at gypsy jazz which is obviously like another offshoot from that kind of you know that kind of cultural Absolutely. side of it they have a very similar picking technique so i don't know if you've seen the gypsy jazz guys mm -hmm. when they pick and they have very similar things so when they pick everything's a downstroke well everything all the downstrokes are rest stroke when you do gypsy picking and they do economy picking right so every time you go across a string it's always a down so if you're going towards the floor and you go to a new string it's always a downstroke that's like the rule so it's like if you're doing a triplet it'd be you know, be like down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, going, you know, if you're doing three notes per string down the string. So, and they have that kind of same like wrist stroke. And that's to get the projection and the power, right? So, if you think like originally the, so flamenco, like culturally, comes from, you know, originally it was singing and dancing and clapping. And there's only the fact that the guitar was like the Spanish guitar, it was knocking around. They're like, oh, we've got Spanish guitars lying around, let's use them. So it come, came adopted into the technique and they're like, we need the projection. You know, so they're more worried about- Wow, there's some real volume in Getting some volume, whereas, you know, you play classical and it's all about 
quality of tone and yeah, then, timbre and, and you know and you're not playing over anything else you typically people are going to listen you know on your own people are listening it's party and dancing music exactly 100% percent It's like they're concerned about projection and it being heard so that's why everything was rest stroke you know the rasgeos it's like you know and it's almost dis- distorting like the guitar's like really growling and you know the guitar's set up like with a really low action um, you know it's not set up like a classical guitar to have a higher action for example and obviously you've got the tap plate which is really obvious here most of the time it'll be transparent and you know if you're doing gold plays then you're not going to damage the top so but you'd have like a you know you have scratch plates on a I know we don't hold this one but like typically you have a scratch plates on steel yeah. strings so absolutely if someone's only got a steel string you yeah think, would they be able to do all of that or some of that or they could you could play a lot of the flanco kind of style if you want you it's want to just, just see what it sounds like on this yeah sure particular. it's just going to be heavy on your nails that's the only thing i guess if, if, if that's the only guitar someone's got you can totally I'm not. I'm specifically yeah. not doing any gold pays though, because obviously this is a really expensive guitar. Yeah, I've been yeah, lent. So I don't want to tap the top. What guitar is that, by the way? This is a Tom Sands acoustic, which he very nicely, uh, very generously sent me to look after and play for him for a for a little bit. But um, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Unfortunately, I've got to give it back at some oh. point. Um, <laughs> Say la vie. All good things come to an end. Nice to have it. Though. Oh yeah, an absolute um, joy. And even with. What do you call it in your course? You call it the Carter Scratch? Oh yeah, kind the of thing. Scratch. That's kind of got a little bit of that. Yeah, that's got like, I mean, technically that it would be a, a Rasgeo, I guess, technically. Because it's like a... Which think, is how I play Blackbird, really, with that kind of little oh, strum. Okay. Yeah, I think right. Rasgeo, uh, I don't speak Spanish, but I think it is basically means strum, pretty okay. much. Don't fully quote me on that. <laughs> I'll ask, I'll ask my girlfriend, yeah, she's the wish, expert there. Check that <laughs> we, can, we can verify that. So technically that is kind of from the same school, right? You know, and, but I guess it's just a lot of the technique things, but you could, tr- you could do them on a steel string. You're just gonna find that, you know, you're gonna, if you've got right hand nails, you're gonna probably go through them, but you can put, um, you can reinforce some of acrylics or like yeah. table tennis balls if you wanna go ghetto, yeah. you know? I know that's what Will <laughs> McNichol does. He puts, he, Super glues uh, table tennis balls underneath. I do think that the steel string acoustic guitar is, is such a physical instrument to play though, whether it's finger style or just the basic chords at the start. Yeah. Nylon string or electrics are just easier on, on the fingers, on the, on the fingers, hands. Yeah. I think like I was saying before, the, the bit where the nylon is trickier, especially for beginners, is the spacing on the strings. They're very yeah, wide. Yeah, like a C chord, for example, is so much wider. Yeah. You know, as a beginner chord, you're probably going to be doing it more like that, which wouldn't be ideal. Classical would be more like that. Yeah, more thumb, less likely to go... Uh, Yeah, the thumb's not expected to go over the top when the neck's this high. Yeah, yeah. So, like, for a D chord, that's how I'd play it, and this wouldn't be how I'd recommend a beginner with a a neck this thick, for example. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, it's just something to be aware of. It's, it's It's so difficult to try and communicate all that to someone who just, I just want to learn this thing yeah 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 you know when they, when they don't have that experience there's a lot of, but there's a lot of different schools of thought with all this and they end up in different places I which mean, is why I want to show all this more advanced stuff on everything that I offer online because I want beginners to have a look at it and be exposed to it yeah I mean, I mean, you've taught in person for years, right? How many times would a kid come in with a Absolutely. nylon string acoustic yeah. with like the action up here? Yeah, yeah. And you pick it up and you're like, I can barely play yeah. this. And it's like, how do I expect a, an eight-year-old to the, play this guitar with? And the like, more expensive you know? guitars, there's you 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 can get them sounding a, a little bit better absolutely but up to a certain point they don't sound loads better for the money it's diminishing returns yeah big time but playability wise can be a lot you can yeah. do a lot more with expensive yeah, guitars than you can cheap yeah big time um 
Although saying that, what I was saying before with the spacing, you can get models that have less wide spacing on nylon strings. So I know Yamaha, for example, definitely do a nylon that's got a thinner string space and so okay. more like a steel string so if you're like it's like i really want to play nylon but it's too wide you know look around you can find some that have like hybrids they also do one that's got like a this is a bad example because this joins at the 12th fret so this is actually more like a it's classical in that this joins on fret 12 and so mm. does this but typically a steel string would join on fret 14. yeah i don't know if you've got yeah if you look at your brunswick right yeah. there that you've got that joins on fret 14. So that's more standardised, yeah. isn't it? For a for a steel string would be to join here. So and that gives you better access to the top. Now you will find you can get uh, nylons that join at fourteen as well. They're not that common, and will have thinner spacing. So you can get these kind of like hybrids. But it, it's that that we're looking for. There's open chords at the first few frets. Yeah. This being a lot bigger and being a lot wider. Yeah. It, it can be an issue and and means that the the easier strings on the fingers that the nylon string is yeah it can be harder to play just the basic chords but yeah. going higher up the neck playing more advanced things it becomes easier yeah yeah it can certain in things so many ways easier, you know right. as you move up the neck yeah move up, move up to the dusty and things can the get dusty easier end, yeah 100 percent. i think um that's where i kind of get you know coming from a nylon background and then playing more steel string you know as of the last few years it's the string spacing that probably catches me out the most. Really? On the right hand. Going between both of them. Yeah. Not the left. My left hand kind of adapts because the steel string. Here. You know, this is like an electric in that. You know, this doesn't feel too dissimilar to playing a Fender or something on the yeah, left yeah. hand ish or give it whatever yeah, brand. Yeah. You know, it's a Fender for whatever. But it's the right hand when I'm picking. I'm more likely to trip up with here and with because the string space is smaller so you know if I was going to get like a custom steel string I'd probably get a slightly wider so I said I was going to get Tom to build me my own one of these if I had a bunch of money lying around I'd probably get him to do a wider string spacing but not quite just to make it a little bit closer yeah, to that yeah just way. to feel more at home but you know it's Again. And I like my acoustic guitars to play like electrics I'll be honest yeah so my first ever one was a um I don't have it out. My uh, crafter, which had oh, yeah. uh, a bowed back and a very slim neck. It, it, oh, what was the old like? Um, yeah, it is. Oh, what's that for? Ovation kind of style. It was yeah. It's a budget one yeah. of those basically. Classic. Um, yeah, they but they're so much easier to hold than something like this, yeah. which is really huge and physical. So yeah, I think time. that's a really important point for people. I mean, you, we want them to try them out, but uh, tr try out a big range of guitars. Yeah, big time. Also, if you think like. Steel, you know, that's not a, that's an OM size, I think. We're getting into technical stuff. But if you had a dreadnought, I think we've got a dreadnought lying around. But they're big old, you know, yeah. you give a dreadnought to a... Yeah, to a 10-year-old. Yeah. It's crazy. They're, they're gonna it feels read, like they're holding they're gonna, a bear, yeah. Yeah, yeah literally. Or anyone that's not holding, not used to holding a guitar, they're, they're big things to you. So yeah. keep all that in mind. And when you just look at a photo online, they all look the same. It's just like guitar. Yeah, yeah. Big but time. you try them... And you, the millimeters matter. Yeah, big time. And why one is more comfortable than the other, it's personal choice. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, your, it's all down to your, your body ergonomics, and you know. So I guess starting from the people you want to play like is best as inspiration. Yeah. Um, and the style of music that you're into. Yeah. But also pick the thing up, put your fingers around it, and see what see what's, see what's comfortable. What's yeah, big time, I think. Be flexible, you know, don't kind of be like blinkered going into We it, all are, like, aren't we, as yeah, well, with know, guitars? Because you know. we, do, we do get um, uh, bowled over by the looks. It's like, that's the guitar for me. It, like, chooses you. But when you hold it, if you listen to that and try enough of them, the guitar that chooses you might not look like you expected it to. Yeah, yeah, big time. Um, I know that from being a Les Paul player for so often, then playing Fenders and uh, get actually owning my first Strat. Yeah. Six months later, I was a different guitar player. Yeah, and I find yeah, like Les, Les Pauls, I don't find them that comfy. No, they're not at all. They're heavy. Yeah, yeah. In fact, as a as a doing that same thing, I I play semi uh, semi acoustics now. They're all yeah. uh, all, all the big D'Angelico stuff. Yeah, you get a similar thing, but they're they're a lot more comfortable. I mean, if I was doing two hour gigs, there's no way I'd be playing a big heavy Les Paul. No. No way. <laughs> but I used to. No, I used yeah, to love yeah. it, and that was the only way, you know. Yeah. So just be be more open, and yeah, you'll uh, it'll work a lot better for you. You'll be able to do a lot more, I think. Yeah, hundred percent.
finger picking's a funny one though, right? I guess it's like, you know, people might not be so up on, like even not understand the differences necessarily between the nylon string and the steel string and then going into more, it's like, oh, that's an OM <coughs> size, that's a dreadnought size, oh, this is a parlor guitar, oh, and that's all, a flamenco guitar. It gets very or, inside know. baseball, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's just like, well, don't get too like confused by it, just go and play some, I think. Try really, it. You know, try to just go to try guitar it. shop and play a few. Absolutely. But yeah, when it, when it comes to getting the finer details of stuff and you are spending hours a day, a week, playing these things, those millimetres start to matter. And it can be a lot more comfortable and you'll want to play a lot more if you've got a comfortable instrument. So oh, yeah. An instrument that does it. I now, for uh, electrics, I often play eights these days. Really? Gage eights. Do yeah, you? Yeah. So you're shocked by that. I watched that video with... Um, Rick Beato, was Rick it? Rick Beato and, uh, and Brian May. Wow, eights. and of course he did the one. He did the one where he, he claimed that uh, like nines and eights sound better, uh, which I think was more open to interpretation. But what Brian May said was everyone back then used to play with thinner strings in the, like the seventies and stuff. Well, but they used to make up their own gauges. Well, they were banjo ba- strings, yeah, right? banjo strings and stuff. Yeah, buying them individually. Um, so but you just get that. loads more expression. And when I do it, I just find I can um, get way more expression easier. And I don't have to worry about breaking the strings. I'm not. I'm not doing gigs. I'm not worried about. Yes. Yeah. Fair. I'm not worried about all, all that side of stuff. I just want it to sound better. And That's when I'm doing lead stuff, especially, I want to be able to grab hold of the string and do what I want with it. Yeah. And I don't have like huge, massively strong hands. Like I'm, I've got piano player fingers, to be honest with you. It's the tension that I find because yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know if you saw on that um, my Insta. I had that Trent guitar recently, and that came with nines on it. I haven't played a guitar with nines for like. I don't know, years. Like yeah. Maybe in the guitar shop I picked one up, but I was picking it up and I was like, well, I was like, this feels like a toy. Like, literally, because I'd yeah. do a bend and be like, whoa, way wish. And just the, the tension on the right hand, I'd be yeah. picking, I'd be like, this is, I'm hitting the guitar way too hard. I need yeah. to like... You don't need to. I need to come back like 10% on, on everything. But like, when I was first learning, again, from looking at the people I wanted to play like, I was playing 11s. Uh, oh, yeah, and then yeah. I had to go slinky top, heavy bottom yeah. to get you know the the heavier sound at the low end. I'm like, yeah, was it yeah. heavier really, or could I have just EQ'd it different or yeah, played yeah. it different? My bro used to have like strap the high action and the twelves, like Steve Ray Vaughan style, and it was the most it was the most brutal guitar to play. It's, you know, it sounded There's, good in the room, but it was the worth Tom it. Hanks meme where he's like, I play elevenths for the tone, and his oh, fingers are in shreds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not, you know, God, it's you know. I think uh, there's definitely a lot of mystery and smoke and mirrors with there that. There is a little you know. bit. Honestly, man, go for comfort because you'll play better and I swear tone comes from the fingers. Oh, I, you know, I've done plenty of memes on that with the tones and the fingers. It's funny, it's people so still nice, get their knickers in a twist about that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, and we all time. do because we all want an A chord to sound as good as possible. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You know, we all have a sound that we're looking for and the people do, you, you know, that we like use that certain gear. But I'll tell you what, you know, uh, you know, Keith Richards plays tele- is the Telecaster Open G sound. Yeah, he can yeah. play this. But he's going to sound like Keith Richards. Yeah, of course. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, <laughs> it's as simple as that. You give Brian May any one of these guitars, he's going to sound like Brian May. Absolutely. You know, if I give it to you, you're going to sound like you, and if you give it to me, I'm going to sound like me. It's and like, we've got to be all right with that. We've got to take yeah. what we can from these specialist players and these phenomenal uh, monsters of the history of guitar. But also accept that it's going to become a cocktail, which is yeah. your your influences and yeah, everything what we can that do. You've, you've studied and the way you hold, touch the guitar is you know everyone's different.